find them all. It's, it's the tricky thing about having such a long uh, hour, hour and a half stream is trying to find those little snippets. Mm-hmm. But I mean, YouTube's creating the, the, they've got like the clip feature. So you need a mod or something to just clip that. Just clip it out. Um, how do you decide, like, how do you decide which sounds you want to I have available? It's... It's us on the stream. Yeah, we're here. We're just chatting. What's up, everybody? I see like a bunch of people were were waiting. It was funny. I looked at this stream. Um, I think it was it was sometime yesterday, and I saw people waiting. So they were, uh, I guess, super super stoked to uh, to learn how to make a, a custom soundboard. <laughs> but now uh, just just kind of chat for a bit, just while people um, while people you know sprinkle in. Getcha. And uh, everyone who's here. Make sure to say hello in the live chat. I see Akash here. Hello. I'm going to say hello here. Have it on my phone. Hello, everyone out there. But yeah, I'm super, I was, super I, excited about this I was one. watching your... F- <laughs> I couldn't figure out how why you had stopped talking, but with the screen. <laughs> I, was, I was watching the wrong screen, and that confused me. So yeah. I'm going to scroll down on that. It's funny, like, <laughs> you, you guys in the chat, like we have we have all this stuff going on um whenever we do any of these streams like we have like a screen there we have program running over here we have program running over there um so yeah it's like try try like these first few minutes is almost like getting ourselves in a way synced up while you guys while you guys you know get your your virtual seats everybody's um, trying to make their way to the front run rush away as fast as they can yeah <laughs> trip other people in orange shirts run, running run, running in their nerds um but but virtually yeah. um i wore this kirby i wore this red shirt today because i wanted to see if it would like help me blend in like i've never as part of a solar slab episode gotten any any color from the sun <laughs> but, but in this case it's because we, we shot so much stuff at the at the beach and out in miami like um i did so i wore a red shirt so that i can kind of kind of just blend in all together no, I've uh, I was gonna wear a red shirt, but um, I wasn't having it. Um, it was in the wash, really. So I've I've gone with my solo work shirt. Oh, I thought I thought you were gonna I thought you were gonna wear the uh, what's it called the uh, I played I I played my part in the assembly of 3D Experience <laughs> World shirt that you showed me the other day. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one that's in the wash. Yeah, that was a uh, so for those of you um, watching at home. Uh, the shirt I'm referring to was a shirt that Solar Champions program members got uh, if they got a presentation on the agenda for for 3D Experience World, and it's funny because I I I designed the shirt, <laughs> but, but I was never, you. That was me. I, that was me. That was all me. And then I got them made, um, and uh, I actually I didn't request them myself, so that was the first time ever that I saw it. It was just during like a like a video chat with you. <laughs> I don't know you had I was wondering, that's quite a smart shirt. Oh wow. I didn't realize it was you. Does that make you think more of me? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like a, a modicum more, yes. Um but no, I, I had the idea, I had that idea for, for like years to make a shirt like that. Um and it was like the like to do like the whole like part and assembly like sort of sort of pairing. Um but uh but yeah. That was it. Was like the it was it was of course like the the perfect time. The check in on the live sense. chat here. I think uh, I think we're good to go. Like there, there's still going to be people trickling in as as we go. But yeah, we're we're here. We're live. The, the show has officially started. Welcome everyone to to Solar Slide Design. Uh, so those of you who've been keeping up with us, we've had a few episodes uh, so far this year in in 2022. And we've had live design going for for a couple years now, but this year is really new in a way. You know, we're we're having some of our best community members come on to show us what they know. You know, give us tips and tricks, and you know, in, in very much in the spirit of live design, just kind of have that sort of like over the shoulder, like I just walked over to your desk or we're just hanging out somewhere type conversation, uh, where we get to learn learn from each other um, and ask questions, right? So. Uh, those of you who are here here in the live chat, welcome. Again, tell us where you're from. Say hello. Uh, but furthermore, as the as the stream progresses, make sure you're asking questions. You know, we have 
We yes. have Kirby here. Kirby, you are you are Meow. skilled <laughs> in a lot of things, including making me laugh while I'm doing the intro. <laughs> because you have this ridiculous soundboard that that you created. Uh, a lot of people know you, Kirby, but but for those who don't, just tell tell us a little bit about, a little bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is Kirby Downey. Um, Sean said, uh, you know. He wants to feature a lot of people and show what skills they have. So I don't know when they're going to turn up. But in the meantime, <laughs> I'll keep you entertained. Um, so my, I'm originally from South Africa. I live in London, and I do a lot of fun things with SolarWorks. So I'm a, I'm a SolarWorks champion. I'm a CSWP. I'm a SolarWorks user group leader. I'm a user group uh, committee lead for Europe, a product designer, 3D printing professional, a prop maker, a gamer, an A4, which is an adult fan of Lego. I like Lego. Magic wheelchair builder. I've done a few... Build, uh, builds before a podcast that I run the, the core podcast and a Guinness world record holder, which is quite fun. Um, I had to did write I, that did down. I know that. Did I know that about you? Well, you do now. I've got the record for the largest 3D printed prop from a video game in the world. I didn't know that. Like, I, I vaguely, I vaguely, I, I, I was like, I, I don't know if he's ever mentioned the Guinness Book of World Records part. But then when you mentioned what it was for, I was like, oh, yeah, I've never heard that. That is awesome. You need to. That needs to be like number one on your like your list of factoids about yourself. Whenever you tell someone anything, it's like, "Hi, I'm Kirby Downey." Like anything you're doing, like I am a Guinness Book of World Records holder. Like that is so cool. I was I didn't expect it. It was a project I was doing uh, for Bethesda for the launch of launch of Doom in 2016. Oh wow! And they did okay. a they 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 did a a uh, partnership with uh, Guinness World Records for like a Bethesda page, and that was one of the records that they entered, and it got it. It was good. That's that's super cool. Um, so I asked you to come on to Live Design. Uh, you're here. I saved some questions, you know, not, not just, like, technical questions about how you how you did this, but but questions about just the, the inspiration for this project. Like, everyone knows it was in the thumbnail. It's in the title for the YouTube uh video and stream here you know making a, a custom soundboard yes why why what gave you that initial inspiration to to create a soundboard and for those of us watching at home like why like what was sort of the the end use for it like why why, why, do you, why did you feel you needed a soundboard <laughs> other than to make <laughs> me laugh on solver slot design <laughs> So I, I run a, a podcast with my buddy Johnny Harrison. It was probably about two years ago. I had a phone call with you and Johnny. Um, I remember that call. Close almost <laughs> to the day because it was also a, a public holiday like it is today. Um, it was really hot outside and Johnny and I had a few to drink and we jumped onto the call for you with you later in the afternoon and you just – you were having such a good laugh. You just said to us, you know, you guys need to stream this. This is funny. People need to see it. So we're like, Yes. We'll do it. So we put together our podcast and we hang out twice a week where we just chat and hang out and enjoy, you know, a drink or two, you know, as if we're just, but you know, hanging out. It's our chance to hang out and we bring other people from the community in. But I felt like I really needed to add some, some source to it. So, some like, for example, if, you know, if we needed to add a bit of jazz, I needed some music or something like that, or you know, if if we just needed to fill the silence with a not that one, um, <laughs> with that, you know, or if, or if, we, if we have some breaking news, we can we can do some breaking news sounds. That was the whole idea of getting a, a, a putting together a soundboard. But soundboards are expensive; and they're very difficult to operate and run. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I could have spent a lot of money on a proper soundboard, which I eventually did as things progressed, but I wanted to build my own. I wanted to make my own and have fun with it and learn about it. So I did that. I did exactly that, built my own little soundboard um, made from Adafruit components. And Adafruit is very, very, very fantastic um, because on their website they have a variety of electronic components that can do a variety of different things. A lot of prop makers use their equipment. And they purpose built. So this is a purpose built Neo trellis board. Um, that means you can program everything on you, and all these buttons are have RGB in them. And people can do anything on it. And they've got a list of really cool projects on there. Um, 
and I can show you the the product page. Um, yeah, let's take a look of their stuff. So this here is the the Adafruit Neo Trellis M4. This is the okay. exact the exact kit that I bought. Um, and you know it's, it's quite complicated. I'm I'm not that smart when it comes to electronics. I like to find things like this, see what people are doing with it. And if you go to the bottom, they've got their learn thing. You mm. can even then go and search the trellis and there's just tons of projects, you know, made by people that are way smarter than me. Uh, for example, someone's made their own little Flappy Bird game with it that lights up. Someone's done like a noisy grains of sand that topple over. Yeah, bunch of like you're saying, like a bunch of beginner stuff. But and there's some intermediate. I guess they see like an advanced tutorial. But if, if that's if that's kind of if this is something you're look, just looking to get into, it, it sounds like they they very much support you in that way. Yeah, I mean this is a perfect place to start. I use this tutorial, Star Trek. for example. Yeah, this is a Star Trek soundboard. So you can go into this lesson and you can see how to prepare all your audio files, um, how to code the soundboard according to you know this year so here's a soundboard code how to switch out different sounds change your colors and all that stuff i don't know how to create any of this but i can look at this and figure it out um and then it's just a little library of your different colors but this project here means that you can have very little knowledge on how to program a soundboard and pretend like you do um and all these little things are here for great inspiration so that you can see I'm looking to create some sort of soundboard for a, say, for example, you want to build um, some sort of robot or a cosplay or something like that that requires buttons to be pushed and lights to flash. This is a good starting point. So I took this, this little, this, uh, the you know, trellis board, bought it. It came with a little plastic enclosure. I threw it away and I, th I said, I'm going to make my own. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, we can we can talk even more about this as we go, but but yeah, like my like one of my biggest takeaways from this is um, there was kind of there was like there there is different avenues that you can go in, right? Like you said, and this is common across almost any sort of tool that you would consider buying for anything. Like I feel right, this idea yes. that you can you can you can you can splurge and spend a ton of money on like this high end tool for whatever it is, right? If it's a, uh, I don't know, it's a, if it's a table saw or yeah. if it's in this case, like a soundboard. But if you, if you're just looking to get into it, like in your case, right, you just started a podcast and you were considering using this to kind of just make the experience richer, more dynamic, fun. Yeah. Um, all the stuff that, that you, you've, you've now implemented into your podcast, but you didn't want to sort of just spend a bunch of money without like proving that true. You wanted to say, okay, how can I, how can I just get this, this sort of functionality, right? This sort of functionality yeah. in my podcast. And then, you know, from there, see if it works and maybe I'll invest more later. And you, like you said, you, you kind of went the route as well of, of customizing it and kind of, kind of making it your own. I think that's super cool. Yeah. So yeah, but part, part of the whole inspiration was with, with this whole thing was I wanted a soundboard and I wanted to learn more about X shape. Mm. My design philosophy is always, if you're going to learn how to design or if you're going to learn how to create something, don't just go in there blindly and create a block and add some fillets and do this. Um, go in with a project, go in with an end goal. If you've got that target, you'll feel a lot more inspired and you'll feel a lot more encouraged when you do make a few mistakes and when you do, you know, have to spend an hour trying to figure out how to work a certain feature because For sure. you, you learn a lot from that. Your next project, that hour spent learning how to do a certain feature is going to be five minutes in the next project. And then from there, that next project, you may spend another hour do, learning something new. And you just, if, if you attack learning with a project, I feel like it's a lot more effective. You, you can achieve a lot more. Absolutely. So, I mean, I'm sure we'll get tons of questions as we go. And again, you guys in the chat, not even, not only feel free, but but we encourage you. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like trying to bring you guys into this this chat, this 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 video chat that that Kirby and I have going on. That's that's some of the spirit yeah. of what we want to do here. So, 
ask questions, whether it's about Adafruit, whether it's about you know how Kirby's designing something. Um, absolutely, we encourage you to ask questions here in the the YouTube chat. So, Kirby, my next question is, of course, like how did you how did you go about designing it? So we decided we're not going to just suddenly on an episode have a soundboard and press buttons. We wanted <laughs> to take our viewers on the journey with us. You know, see how we learn. So on an episode, I had all the components with me and I told Johnny, you know, let, let, let's, let's see your design skills. I had a little challenge for him. So I measured for him and he did all the, the design. You know, so mm -hmm. a lot of projects end up that way where, especially during lockdown and that you don't have access to all the components, but you still have a job to do. Sure. Um, so we were in a meeting, in like a Zoom meeting, um broadcast live on our youtube channel and we um got designing so johnny did did his little thing i sent him all the dimensions and i'll show you exactly the model that he sent it here i called it pcb but better because i made it better <laughs> um where you know, even the champions program, there's like a lot of a lot of people that make content like on YouTube or on Instagram. Um, so the process, the thought process that you had of, oh, hey, I'm going to make this thing. It's for the podcast. Why not just make this a podcast episode on YouTube? Exactly. And <laughs> and there were a lot of discussions of you know what is important, what isn't for this specific model. So there's no components on this board. It's just we got our power, our JST uh, plug, and our um, audio jack. Those are the only important bits, and then our buttons. So Johnny made it as an assembly. I don't like assemblies. It's just my way of working. I like to just make it all one part and then separate it. So I created a single SolidWorks part. Um, we have a lot of arguments about this, um, but you know, there's this. You know, you you can have a hundred people design a duck but everybody's design tree is going to be different but everybody's going to have a duck at the end so <laughs> it doesn't matter it really it's, doesn't matter how you get to that duck especially it looks like a duck <laughs> and, and this is something that i became aware of uh with you when um because we used to work together on on making some tech vlog stuff so yes. I, I, I recall like you making certain videos and seeing how you you would often you know sort of engage this this multi-body approach where like you said someone like johnny many others they would use they would use the assembly environment um yeah. but also further like you said i don't i don't know how much it matters it's almost like it with it with these sort of projects especially right because you're really just making sure that you have the keys in the right place right i assume so you can yeah. you can then make an enclosure around it and it'll it'll actually fit <laughs> like the way it's supposed to that's exactly all we need is these buttons and where we're going to plug it in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's simple stuff. Yeah. So I'd never really fiddled around with X shape at this point. So I had to figure this out myself. I mean, a, a lot of people can agree that uh, the, the 3d experience platform at first is kind of a bit, a bit awkward, but once you start to get the hang of it, you can really see how powerful it is. And you can really get a good feel of, you know what you can achieve with it i mean every now and then i jump onto um x design in that because i need to make a little jig and someone else is using the solidworks license at work we've got a little license that we float around um so i'll just jump onto there quickly to make the little block that i need to get put into our printers at work and it's just that, that ability to just get on a browser-based um design software that works similar to solidworks is great yeah, and I like what you're showing here, right? Like you, you made this in SolidWorks, and like you said, there's there's a lot of ways that someone might have, uh, which and we've we've shown we've shown some, uh, you know, 3D Sculptor, which is the package that contains X Shape here on the stream, uh, before. But I like that you're showing that, you know, for these like boxy sort of parametric shapes, like really, it's I say parametric, but it's you know, you're just you're just kind of extruding these. Um, you know these squares uh, representing the keys. Yeah. Like that's it's fine. And then, but I like what you're showing in terms of because you know you think about like the new Maker Edition that we have. Um, it has it has SolidWorks, has X Design, has X Shape. Uh, but 
like the thought process of, okay, I'm going to just make this very simple set of keys. And then because I want a certain type of shape, like for the exterior, one that's a lot more exciting yes. than maybe the, the stock one, I'm, I'm going to go in here, but they're actually going to, to interplay, which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I, from there in SolidWorks, I saved that as a SolidWorks part, went to X shape, went import file, selected file on disk, because obviously I'm importing a file on my computer. I'm not taking something from a 3D drive. If you are working and collaborate, collaborating with others, you can grab it from one of the, the uh, collaborative spaces there. But I'm going to go from my, my desktop. Uh, make sure you select your SolarWorks part. You're going to choose your file. PCB, but better. And I'll import that there. Like I said, it's, it's a single SolarWorks part. It's much easier. I see I've got Brandon in the chat, a guy I went to school with, Hardy. Um, I can translate the Afrikaans he put in there, not for him, it's good evening. Um, that's, that's what I love about this whole thing, is that we're, just, we're engaging with so many people from around the world. That's all I know, it's, it's super neat. As you, as, you, as you mentioned that, coincidentally, I was saying hello <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's interesting to see like how, like you said, your, your workflow within SolidWorks is... Like you've identified, it's a little bit different than maybe what some other people would do. Um, you know, using multi-body, um, even even here, like how you how you chose to go about this this you know project that you're you're creating, you're making. Um, you know, there there are ways to get the solvers file in other ways too, right? Like if you if you're using the Maker Edition, you have three experience solvers, which has all the same CAD tools, but you can save to the cloud. So you can save to the cloud, and then you can just open directly into X Shape or X Design from there instead of doing like the import thing. Yeah. But here, this is just how you did it. Like you did the import thing, and now you're directly in X Shape, and you're ready to make a shape around it. I think that's neat. Yeah, I didn't have to t make it a uh, STL. It's not a um, triangle-based body. Um, it's a solid works part. So we we had a little chat about this before, and we kind of figured out the solution to this was I'm left clicking, and <laughs> I can't. For example, I can't, like in SolarWorks, I can't do that. Um, we actually found a solution for that. Usually my initials are over there. You click on your little initials, go to preferences. There it is. Mouse control. And here you can switch between your different, your, your favorite alternative uh, design software. So if you select SolidWorks, like I'm used to SolidWorks, that means that now... I have all of the SolarWorks commands. So there's a little neat little trick that we learned early today. Yeah. So there's like little little interface things, but it's 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 a great thing to point out too. And it's interesting. When the first time I believe it's the first time you, you would launch like like X is on direct shape, it'll ask you that question. Like it'll actually be a pop-up. Um and it'll ask you if you want to use like the sort of three experience style presets, um, Gatia or SolidWorks, if you said. So SolidWorks, like we all know, like the mouse controls what we're used to. Uh, so when they ask you that, it, it's it's important. But hey, if uh, if we if we like you said, if if we kind of if we're one of those people, and I've certainly been in this mode, right, where I'll I'll click, you know, click on whatever just to get designing. Like I'll click yes, yes. or no, and not even read the message. <laughs> so like that could be one of those pop ups. And like you showed, you could you can always change it after the fact. So in here, I've I've put in a what's called a quad ball. I call it a potato. Um, I've selected the midline and I've gone mid plane so that it gets into the center. And I've changed the scale, added an extra couple of blocks to work with, and I've got my potato to work with. The reason why I call it a potato yeah. is because <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've I've heard people like for sub D bodies like these like round you know push pull bodies you can bring in like you like you showed these primitives. I've heard people say like blob. Uh, I've never heard anyone call it a potato. <laughs> I need to put a little plane in here. While I put this little plane in here, the reason why I call it a potato is because most of the time while you're busy fiddling with it, it looks like a potato. And you mish and mash this little potato until it actually looks like the, the body that you're trying to create. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a fun little analogy that Johnny and I I uh, came up with, so I need to put this plane above that, if I'm not mistaken. 
bring that back down, just like in SolidWorks, similar kind of design tree. Now I can go back into here. I can edit this feature. And now I can actually put symmetry back on now that I've got this plane here. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, just using this little plane allows you to create that bit of symmetry there. See, it's, um, it's doing something a little weird here. Let's figure that out. So one of my favorite things to put on here is, if I can find it, is show the cage. Because this cage just gives you a bit more flexibility in your you know, how you're man maneuvering everything. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit here. Did not like that. <laughs> a little bit too, little bit too, far, too far It's because I grabbed that corner there. There you go. So I want to think if you right-click that, you can switch it to XYZ. So there's referenced around your screen, your selection, or your XYZ. So that way you can pull and push it from those planes and those selections. In interesting. Yeah, and that's that's another. I remember Jason on one like an old an older episode a couple couple weeks back um, when he did the monster truck one. He, he pointed that out. You can sort of just like shift it, uh, shift like that, the kind of directionality of it. That that that's where I learned it from. Is oh, are you, are you watching those kind of <laughs> things? Awesome. Watching for me, learning how to design can be quite interesting if you just watch how other people design, how they get from point A to point B. Mm. So you got other buttons here that allow you to add extra bodies because if if you've worked with STLs and that that kind of format before, you know that. Um, whoops, I guess I'm starting again. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I forgot That's to accept. Cozy. It. There we go, Sean, the hero of the hour, <laughs> saving the day. So if you've worked with um, STLs or any kind of polygon type of model. There's only so much you can stretch a polygon before it kind of deforms. So mm -hmm. sometimes you've really got to add a bit of extra a bit of extra body on there. And that allows you to, you know, control it a bit more finitely. And if I need to get another kind of some more blocks in there, some more polygons, gets this feature here. Just click on that, and you can see it's going to add another set of lines around there. And that allows you to be able to define it a bit more. So if I bring this closer, I can create a much sharper edge. And this is why I said I had the analogy of a potato. There's, it doesn't look like much now. Damn, when you get it all together, it's pretty. You can see it's created a much sharper make, curve here because there's more, there's more polygons here. Um, so... so Kirby, what is, I guess, one thing I'm wondering as, as you're going through this um, is, and I have some guesses, but what, why are you creating this shape this way? You know, what, what, is, what is it, are you trying to get it at an angle, like in real life, like you're trying to get it at an angle so it's easier to, like, so it's yes. sort of more, like more facing you as you're, as you're podcasting? Is that, is yes. that the idea? Is Precisely. That, like, I wanted to be at a bit of an angle. Um, but I wanted to add, I mean, I could make a box. Box is easy. Um, I just wanted to create some little fun feet. Now, the problem is 
right now you can see where all the buttons are going to appear but i can't see where the special important bits are the you know where the the actual uh plugs are being put into so mm -hmm. if i use this button it's yeah it's this one change transparency i can actually change the transparency of this quad ball and now i can actually start to see inside and i can see hang on i need to bring this in here a bit closer possibly add some more um lines over here so that i can have a bit more control mm -hmm. let's put a few more now i can just grab these in this nice shape because i've added those extra vertices vertices in there so you're, you basically you're adding lines on that cage and yeah. on the body so that you could control them a bit more at that like very central area yeah i mean that should be okay, okay. yeah so uh, it's interesting so i can see those see the ports that you're matching now whereas before they were completely swallowed up <laughs> exactly so, I mean, being able to change the transparency and see inside the model really does allow you to fine tune it a little bit more. I'll bring this up a little bit. I think that is gravy right there. Yeah, it looks good. So there's, there's, there's a lot of other features. If I wanted to, for example, add a, a sharper edge here, you can use the crease feature, and that will actually bring that into a sharper edge and you can create a finer fillet in there so you can see it's a bit sharper on the edges than it is in the front so you can really play around and the reason why it's going a bit weird here is because i've got these boxes here overlapping a bit mm -hmm. so you got to be a bit wary about that but i'm sure it should be all right to take into solidworks so we need to knit that, make sure it's a good body. You can see it's gotten rid of all that mishmash in the middle, which is really neat. I mean, you could take this straight into um, X shape if you really want, X design if you really wanted to to work on it as well. But there are a few kind of solid worksy features here, such as shell. You can do some filleting. You can create some lofts. There's a, there's a few little features that you can actually work with here. But we're going to take this into solid works. Yeah, so, it's interesting that you mentioned that too. Like X Design, you could, I guess, you probably, yeah, you could have done, you could have done the whole thing. Like you could have done the whole, the whole top portion with the keys kind of mapped out where they should be in X Design, and then shifted over to X Shape. But I like what you're showing here because you're showing that you can do the same thing <laughs> with SolidWorks. Like, <laughs> I see SolidWorks is bringing up potatoes and gravy. Now, potatoes now, and gravy. SolidWorks. Last time food got brought up in this chat with donut days. <laughs> Well, it was war. <laughs> but yeah, once you're happy with that, you can then export that. I see, see Matt in the chat saying, the ability to push and pull the potato with symmetry in real time is very cool. No need for mirrors, move copy bodies, etc. Exactly. Uh, I like, uh, it's funny, if we if we keep it up at this rate, we're going to influence R&D to change the name of, of, of primitives to potatoes. <laughs> Just different, different shapes of potato. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. If you need a petition, <laughs> I'll sign it. I'll lead it. So when you're ready to export it, you can either, same as importing it, either locally or to one of your 3D drives. So we'll do it to a file. Um, and here's the important bit, and I've actually written it down to make sure I get it right. I always get it wrong. And there was like 20 minutes on our stream where we got this wrong. 3D XML, that allows you to use that same file around the 3D experience platform where uh, SLD XML allows you to take into SolidWorks. You've got your other basic, you know, STL, your steps, your IGS, your 3MFs, perfect for 3D printing or any other kind of design tools. We're going to go with uh, SLD XML and export that. It's interesting. You, so, that, so that you could, you, you do that. Um, it's funny, another thing you can do, like, because I, again, I, I'm sure a lot of people might be using the, the Maker Edition, you could also just open this, like, if you have the, the little connector, like, on the side, 
Yeah. Um, and that's how it shows. Like if you, if you're in SolidWorks and you have a connector on the side, the 3D Experience connector, you can just basically open it from there. Yeah. Um, but like you're showing, I mean, this is this is a project that you're you're basically trying to just do get done, you know, export it, open it, like totally fine. It's you need that quick workflow. So let me put this in here. It is funny. I saw like when you uh, when we were when we were doing a little bit of like just just talking about the episode, you know, a couple a few weeks ago. I saw that you had the S of the XML in there. I was like, oh, pretty curvy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll let that load in. So the templates message there. Yeah, and boom, I've got it in SolidWorks, right there and there. Now. Often, you, you know, I import a lot of step files and STL files into SolidWorks quite often, um, and they're an absolute nightmare to work with. But I'm going to show you some magic here. So I obviously need to put this PCB in here. And, mm -hmm. you know, because SolidWorks is where I'm most comfortable in, you know, I know mm -hmm. where all the buttons are. I know where everything is. And I can just straight away start sketching a plane in here. And this is where people are going to start not liking me too much because I don't design in their, <laughs> in their preferred way. But we're learning. We're learning. Um, this is how I like to split bodies. I'm a big fan of surfaces. Pull it that way and we'll pull it that way. It's so funny because I do, I, do, I do the same thing. Like I'll, I'll do that and like you could just use like the sketch and it would work, but I'll do this just so I can like actually see it's splitting graphically. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I've, yeah, there we go. I've split that body. And now I've got two bodies to work with, you know, two parts to work with. And then the next thing now is just let's hide this, hide this as well. We're going to use these two bodies. Mm hmm to um, subtract. So it's combine. Subtract. There's our main body. There's our bodies to, to combine. I'm going to go like that. And now we've got two halves of a body. And then we just need to make the little gap. If I can find the right plane, which is always exciting. I can then just create a little cutout here. I'm not going to measure that. Look at this. We're doing a unconstrained design. So oh, <laughs> I like how you're you're trying to get to the uh, not that they're hecklers, but you're trying to get to the hecklers before <laughs> before they get to you. Exactly. I'm going to offset this. <laughs> I haven't put it on the right plane. First, that offset. So I mean, this is just and kind use, of. And use quick, offset. Use the offset. A lot of people, a lot, of, a lot of people don't use that. Oh yes, you got the offset here. Offset. You, can, you can set where you want that yeah. that feature to start. That's so cool. I love to use that. And there we go. Now we've got access to these little buttons. Very nice. So, so that's the you know the the, the quick roundabout way we got to the final product and I'll actually open it up for you here. It is this one here. This is the final version that we actually came up with, um, which is okay. been 3D printed. So, you know, I hit control P, took me to the print page and then that's how printing works, I think. Um, <laughs> this was printed, so the, on, these parts the were printed on an HP MJF 5210. Um, so really, really overkill for this project, but I've got a soundboard. It's yeah. Easy. So the final version, the final version I see is some modifications versus what we just did there. Um, it's it's a little slimmer. I noticed that. Um, yeah. But uh, so yeah, it's it's interesting. Like I spent a lot I, more time on this one. I'll be be honest. Um, I really yeah. finessed the shape of this one. I mean, I can. 
it's it's also it's cool to see that when you like even the one you you, you just made which is very similar right um you, you, like you said this is a little bit tweaked but the one that the, the one that you just made and i i was at the point out we're doing it on youtube and we're chatting about it so that stuff always just takes a little bit longer right because we're, we're you're just doing more things yeah um but because it, it, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of going off of a, a question in the chat. You know, how much time do you think a certified SolidWorks professional level user would save using X shape with this design versus hand surface modeling at all in SolidWorks using uh, traditional methods? Which I know you're you're also skilled at. Um, like, what would your answer to that question so, be? Because most of the um, the tools are similarly named and they look kind of similar if if you're csw which is exactly what i am um if you understand solidworks language you can understand the language of 3d experience platform um it's all pretty much similar um some of the pictures or some of the, the phrases would be different for example working with a quad bowl and that stuff because solidworks doesn't have any sub deep designing but all of the, you know, setting up your planes and getting things ready and finding, you know, symmetry and working with a plane to create the symmetry, it's exactly the same way as you would do it in SolidWorks. So it's it's quite similar. You can get rolling with it fairly quickly. Like I said, set up yourself a project. Have a goal in mind. Um, you know, sketch up some ideas. You know, try create a shape that you know you can never make in SolidWorks. And challenge yourself to do it, um, and you'll be surprised what you can get away with in SolidWorks. It's quite scary. I mean, That's I could probably tip. create I could create this in SolidWorks, but it will take me hours. I mean, even this one, this this little potato over here would have taken me hours, and that was five, maybe ten minutes. Yeah, because you would have had. I guess the approach you probably would have done it is like maybe some sort of loft or some series yeah. of lofts, where you just have these sketch profiles on different planes. Lots and lots um, of fillets. <laughs> lots and lots of fillets. Yeah, it was funny on the. So we did. Um, <laughs> it's good. This reminded me of what you just said. Uh, when we when we did the last episode of Solaris Live uh, this week, and so it was just a couple of days ago. And uh, Will Bells from BattleBots Team Hypershock was on stage, and he was doing a little bit of a little bit of a surfacing demo himself in SolidWorks. And he was talking about how he was filling it. He was like, "Okay," and I added a couple, couple, a couple of fillets here and there, so I could feel good about myself. Uh, I just thought that was so funny that he just like he just called out that he was like filling it like at that very moment, not specifically because it was like the best design thing to do or it was necessary, but he just wanted it to look nicer so he can keep himself going. <laughs> I, th I think the biggest debate debate between designers and engineers is chamfers versus fillets. You know, chamfers versus fillets. Yeah, I'm a fan of a good chamfer. I think a chamfer looks a lot better than a fillet, and I know there's a lot of people that disagree with that. A lot of people disagree. <laughs> uh, Sadia said in the chat, uh, "Surfacing is challenging and difficult for me to work with. I need to learn that aspect of of SolidWorks." I think we we're showing with X shape is. Sure, there might be time when traditional service modeling tools are, are something you need to do. Are required, um, yeah. I mean, are required, right? Um, but not not always, and certainly to like make nice looking shapes, it shouldn't be a prerequisite that you're like a surfacing wizard. Um, I mean, I find yeah. par parametric modeling in SolidWorks it's it's a fifty fifty. You know, fifty percent setup, fifty percent execution to create the body, but surfacing is 90, 95% setup of sketches and all different planes and that 5% execution just to make that, that little mold, that little, you know, nice little curve. And you got to do that a ton of more times. Um, that's kind of the way that I see it. Um, and that, I think that's what scares a lot of people into surfacing because they don't realize how much setup you need to create a shape when you're so comfortable just sketch, body, sketch, body. Yeah, I think I, I just in talking with people about this in the past too. Like I, I find that it, a lot of it is can be personality driven. Like some people really like that process of before they even make anything in three D, they're like making several planes, several setup sketches. You know, um, I, I think that it's kind of funny. Like how uh, in the chat we have we have a poll. 
which do you prefer, chamfer or fillet? So those of you watching <laughs> live right now, be sure to be sure to click chamfer or fillet, whichever is is your preference. Uh, I'm going to go with fillet. So, so I voted. First to vote as well. So right now we're at 100. percent We'll see if see if chamfer can can uh, can make a, a comeback there. It, it's interesting. I, even even like at a we talk so much about getting certified and like learning learning how to use you know different tools. I think that along the way of getting a CSWV that the surfacing exam was was the hardest. Like it was the hardest exam, and I think it was to at least for me it was it felt like it was harder than the CSWV itself. <laughs> and this this was this was I guess like probably. 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so the CSW exam itself has changed since then, but, but that, that was kind of my take on it. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, the whole idea of this was why should I make a soundboard versus buying one, for example? Mm-hmm. I thought oh, this would be a fun time to actually show the difference between a high-end soundboard and a little DIY make-it-at-home soundboard. Yeah. So I'm going to play some tunes for you and, and uh i learned a lot with this project here um i think, I think our producer fellas will need to switch to my camera there we go it's now done it sorry <laughs> i've um i learned a lot with this um this here and it was more about exploring x design than learning how to code um I'm not very intuitive when it comes to coding. I've tried it. It's not that great. But with it, I can just make fun little noises very quick. It's limited because there's only so much sound I can put on this. I have to use low-end quality music and that. Um, no, not that one. Not that one either. <laughs> I was gonna say, that isn't, isn't low-end quality music. It's just, Hello there. It's just, so it's just it like... Dun, 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 dun. But, you can, but you can hear there's a little buzz in it but my high end um, one I can do similar stuff you know there's all sorts of sounds that I can mash yeah. into here there's, there, there's um, a quality difference I can, I can tell let me find my little sound so if we can make things quite classy here Sean um, this, is, this is great music or like, if you're just, if you, it's like waiting room music for I know. a stream. For streams. I know um, Matt likes to use it. But with yeah. this, I can play multiple sounds over it. It's what's known as polyphonic. Um, so if I wanted to do all sorts of other sounds over it, um, <laughs> no, um, I can do that. Where With this, I can't really do that. Um this goes straight into my computer. This really doesn't. And there's no way to kind of hear this unless you're using a soundboard. But this is a good place to learn. This is a good place to... This little soundboard project was less about creating some fun sounds for my podcast and more about learning a design tool and fiddling around with some coding and that. Um, I've got the tools here to then go back onto the Adafruit website and find some other cool projects. I can reuse this for, for something else. I've got um, a lot of other projects that I've worked on, like a lightsaber and um, headphones, and I've still got those components, and I can reuse them for other projects. You've got to be really dedicated to sound and podcasting if you're going to go for something high-end, but if you want to do something fun <laughs> and just make some noise... <laughs> Oh my god! It's so uh, like like Sandy was producing the podcast for this episode. The side chatted me and said, uh, "I want a soundboard for for live design." <laughs> but for live design, it's very good, especially if you're in person, because I can import four, you know, three other different mics in here. I can do Bluetooth, so I can connect to my phone and take phone calls. Um, this can connect to any kind of audio device with a jack. That's my computer and then my soundboard. Um, it's just great. Um, it yeah. makes it it really adds to the podcast, and I'm really really proud of the soundboard because I got to learn with it. Now, if I just went yeah. out and bought this, it wouldn't have as much of a uh, a connection. Not at all. I can see that. It's people eat me out. 
<laughs> not at all. I mean, I, and I get that. And the other thing you mentioned, like the quality difference, like I, I can hear it a little bit, but yeah. I'm not sure that it, it it's not that distinguishable. And also, like the one that you made, no one's going to hear that on on a podcast and think, uh, it's it's not the highest quality soundboard, right? Um, so it's it's it, it's cool in a lot of ways. Like you said, the personal connection piece, just making something of your own, I, I think is neat as well. So, okay, so we. We got the poll results in, I'm saying. So about three-fourths of you prefer fill it. And they're all wrong. <laughs> they're all wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, I see um, Mike Sands says, uh, I, think, I think what's really great is, is what you've loaded for sound clips. Sound clips. I mean, they're, they're classics. They, um... <laughs> Just absolute classics. But... The only thing that I wish I could do, what I can do with this soundboard, is add sound. So, for example, I'm going to record a sound right now. Um, run, 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 run. Okay, and then I can play that back. Run, 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 run. And if I really want, I can loop. So it will just play forever until I stop it. Run, 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 um, run, run, run. Please, please stop it. <laughs> so I can really add sound bites and I can import other sounds very quickly. So like with Mike says, I've got classics on this board just loaded, but if mm -hmm. I do ever need to load something else in, I can just go onto the internet, download it, load it straight onto this and it's much quicker. I can't have that much versatility with this. Maybe there is a way. Maybe there is an interface. I've seen people turn these into stuff like Elgato, Stream decks, mini games, all sorts of things have been done with this specific board. So, this is this isn't just something for a soundboard. I've just used it for a soundboard. There's so many more potential things that you can do with this. Yeah, that's what I thought was interesting. Like I, I, I figured when you when you were going to show us that site that it was going to be like just for just for soundboards, like exclusively. But yeah, there's there's a lot of variety. That's the type of that's the type of an of area. Um, you know, there's different, you know, we have some of those, like we have like the main 3D community, but like you said, like the, the, a website like that, where you can go and just review projects, like with, with tools or methodologies that may be at your disposal today or easily could be, like you said, it, it was a very reasonable price point. Yeah. Um, and to be able to go on that site, look at different projects, get started. And like, it was like 95% beginner projects, which I thought was really neat. Uh, Matt Cleggs asked, uh, this is the Roadcaster, uh, Bro Roadcaster Pro. So, I mean, you, you're speaking price. My little soundboard, it was $60 um, plus some printing materials, but it was $60. That was it. Where the, the Roadcaster, that's closer to $500. So there's, there's a big difference there. And this thing is a lot more versatile because I can do a lot more with it in other ideas. I mean... On my, I think there's a link somewhere in the in the description or something. But on my website, kirbydowney.com, um, it's my name with .com. Fairly, fairly <laughs> simple. Uh, <laughs> uh, you just you just got to spell it right, which I just you noticed. Got to spell it right. Take a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whoever spelt it in the YouTube, <laughs> there's, there's an e in it. Um, <laughs> but. My website, kobydowney.com, I've got a list of SolarWorks tutorials on there. And um, all of those tutorials, that I wouldn't advise it for people to go there to learn how to design. It's a place for people to learn, you know, to get some inspiration, to um, see a fun project and be like, hang on, if I apply this to something I want to create, that's, you know, that, that's a starting point. And that, that's what I always look out for is inspiration how can i you know i want a soundboard but how can i make it a fun project how can i make it mm -hmm. exciting i mean i've got a new project lined up let's see if i can spot it there there we go i got a little tie fighter over there i've actually got two of them um it's a very high detail revel model and i want to start live streaming me reverse engineering it rebuilding it in solidworks very, very high mm. detail but also add mechanical aspects to it for example the wings kind of fold like that uh, mm -hmm. to land that you see on the Mandalorian. Um, so I want to recreate that that mechanism um, instead of just being a static model, one that you can actually kind of like open it up and you can move them, have the gear come out as well. Um, very, very mm -hmm. tiny, fine details and, and print it out on a resin printer. Um, 
put those files out online uh, out out there and it's just because I saw a very high detailed model of it. I'm like, I want to do, I want to do that. I want to make that, but I want to broadcast it out there so that others can learn from it, watch what I'm doing, um, get some inspiration. You know, hang out and chat, talk about design, have a beer with me. You know, for that, sure. That's the plan. So in the next week or two, I'm going to be starting that once or twice a week, an hour or two at a time, and just hang out and design. You know, because there's so many d- different places you can watch people play video games but there's a lot of people that want to watch people design <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah it's it's a good point and it, it kind of and kirby i guess before we we lead into like just shouting out your podcast you know properly and you yes. know giving another shout out to your your website is there, is there anything else you wanted to show or, or are we all wrapped up i think that's i think there's not much yeah everything's on my website um everything's on the podcast i mean i can show you my lego that's <laughs> It's there. There we go. <laughs> That's there. I've got loads of Lego. <laughs> we, everyone in the chat, you know, watching here, like that is something. Um, and what's up, Raj? I see Raj has joined the stream. Um, and Raj, everyone that's just joining now, or you know, it, it live design is great. These live streams are great, you know, because you can watch them later. Like you can, you can share them. Like if you saw something today and you wanted to share it with everyone, you know, say at your workplace or your friends. Um, these streams don't just occur like a, a webinar or something and, and just go away. So you can always share this link with, with anyone. But um, I always say whenever I talk to you that I'm so jealous of your backdrop. Like I've tried to do some things <laughs> in the background here with these plants. Like you always make fun of me about them. But um, but I, I, your, your backdrop is just so cool. I'll tell you what, get, get yourself some Lego plants. First of May, they're yeah. releasing a new collection. They've got the okay. bonsai tree. That bonsai tree will fit perfect on your shelf. I'll have to look that up because, yeah, and I, I might do that. Maybe even just like, you know what I'll do? I won't, I won't do any live stream with it. I'll just, I'll just put it up there. And then next time we talk, I'll just have it there and see, see if you notice. I'm sure I will notice. I will definitely notice. Yeah, you'll definitely notice. <laughs> Your first thing, you won't even say hello. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to, again, just kind of end the stream here just by giving a shout out uh, to you, like your, your podcast, um, so if we, we take a look here, um, the, here's the links. So we got youtube.com slash the board podcast. So it's not not quite as easy as kirbydowney.com, but it's pretty <laughs> close. Everyone knows youtube.com slash the, the core podcast. So, um, you know, that's that's hosted by you and by Johnny Harrison, who is, you know, a, a good friend of ours that yeah. we have to have on an episode of Solar Slide Design. Um, but tell us, tell us a little bit more. I know we, we've cut, we've talked a lot about how you have a, a podcast, um, but tell us a little bit more about just the, the podcast overall. Like what kind of stuff do you, do you guys get into? Yeah, mostly. Um, like I said, it's, it's like we're, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're friends hanging out, meeting up after a while in a bar and a pub in someone's backyard and we have a beer or two chatting about and catching up you know not only with each other but with uh our friends people like you sean you've been on there a few times um mm-hmm. and and everybody else that's that joins in so we've had people like jason pool um who has joined us sorry uh jason pool's joined us we've had um Photos Mint, Brandon Walters, who's in the chat there as well. We want to get Matt Clegg on there. Um, there's a lot of people that we've had on there. We've been doing it for about two years. But the most exciting thing that we have done is the hallway hangouts. 3D Experience yeah. World has been virtual for the past two years, and each year we did the virtual hallway hangouts because there's nothing like hanging out with everybody in the hallways between your sessions, going from session to session at any convention, conference or whatever. You go to your sessions and you jump, you, you, you find each other in the halls and you have a conversation about, oh, I saw this, I did this, you should go see this, oh, this is really neat, let's go for a drink kind of thing. Um, and Yeah, it's, those, are, those are awesome, by the way. Like, I, I, I was able to jump on. They like, expect this year, yep. 3D Experience Road was insane. You know, we did Solar's Live for like three straight days, but you guys were pretty much doing the same thing. Um, yep. But I loved how you guys did it. Like, we had guests and everything, but the, you know, you, you, you just had 
you basically just people fil filtering into to the Zoom link, you know, over and over. Um, I thought that was really neat what you did on the core podcast for that. Yeah, it was. It, it was a lot of fun. It was you know people jumping in and out. Um, we had someone who actually traveled through to Atlanta because he was doing a, a couple of personal things there anyway, so he didn't cancel his trip and he managed to break into the uh, into the actual convention center and gave us a tour. Um, he, we had, you know, you joined us at one point, but we also raised $2,000 for magic wheelchair. Yeah. Um, and I ate some hot food because of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, 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 we did that. We held a session with, uh, as many of the women in the community that we, that we knew of, um, invited them and told them, you know, what's it like being a female in, in a, in this industry. And we just let them talk to us and had an open conversation with it. Um, which is now on our channel as well as a little snippet. It's about an hour and a half long. Um, so we, we just realized that we created the safe space that anybody could talk about anything they wanted to and um, really engage with each other. I mean, it wasn't us for eight, eight hours talking like f for you, Sean. You know, most of the time it was you presenting. You were, you were showing off all the cool things that were being shown off where for us it was kind of – sitting back and letting the community take charge of the, the conversation and the, the direction that it was going. And it was a lot of fun. And that's the, the kind of direction that we enjoy that our podcast is going. It's just a place for conversation over a drink or two, talking about the cool things that we're up to. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's an area on your YouTube that says uh, the core podcast is, you know, showcasing cool people who create amazing things. Which sounds really yes. general, but it's the truth. That's that's really the spirit of your podcast, which I love. Um, and you mentioned at the very start of this episode that uh, part of, I guess, how you guys came to the realization that you wanted to start a podcast was through the through a conversation that that we had had, right? Um, me just like you know, I always I get always get a kick out of you and Johnny, but just kind of sitting back and thinking like, okay, I'm probably. I'm probably not the only person uh, that would that would get a kick out of this. So, uh, you know, it, it's been interesting to see how you guys have have evolved it, and and surely, you know, you 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 fit you filled a very important part, I think, of the world. Like I know, even joining the call and like seeing everyone's faces and being like, oh wow, everyone everyone's here. Uh, that whether you're a viewer, you're actually on one of the one of the calls, um, like like Brian and I got to be on. Um, that was that was super neat. So we talked about your podcast. You know, again, everyone go to YouTube.com/slash The Core Podcast. Make sure to subscribe. Um, you know, hear from from Kirby and Johnny on a regular basis, and then and then your website, yeah. right, KirbyDowney.com. Yeah, uh, all my links so are in there as well for social media and my own personal YouTube and that. So it's all there. Awesome. So what else do we have here? Like, you know, we have live design, we have live design just about every other week. Um, again, kind of alternating with a, a special user presenter every, every single time. I want to give a shout out to an episode of Solverse Live that I mentioned uh, just a bit earlier in this stream. So we were actually live in, in Miami uh, earlier this week, and we were live with a user group meeting that was at the Quebec theater uh in miami which was fantastic like we had two we had witch, the witch author BattleBot, and we had uh hypershock both on stage uh which are really heavy <laughs> and and the, and it's funny i'm um, talking with andrea uh, who's on team witch doctor she said a lot of times people will say to me like whenever we, they see the boss in person that they're a lot bigger you know just just in terms of their 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 you know their volume like the, the bounty box like they're just a lot bigger than i expected she said what do you i mean they're, they are about 250 pounds, so <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty big, and they can, they can surely do some damage. They're pretty intimidating looking, but uh, we, we captured, you know, sights and sounds from their shop, asking a bunch of questions that I'm sure a lot of you would be interested to, to watch and check out, um, you know, both at their shop and then later on at a user group meeting, and uh, we got some, some cool shots, too, of just Miami. Um, you know, we were, we were there, we got some cool shots. Of, of the city. So go and check that out. Like we mentioned, all of our live stream episodes are, you know, they're stream live at first. That's how they debut. So you get the opportunity to go into live chat and everything. Uh, but the recordings pretty much instantly go onto YouTube. So you could you could check out, you know, stuff you missed if you came late. 
Um, or, you know, if you missed the episode because you're busy at work or whatever it was, um, you can you can watch them later on. So that recording that that episode is is live today on the SOLIDWORKS YouTube. Uh, and you can also check out a future live stream here. We're going to have Wade Anderson from Solve Shop. He's going to join our hosts for every manufacturing live episode, Mike Bookley. And they're going to talk about the ways that manufacturers can best utilize technology to develop these, these business decision engines that allow us to solve complex problems in manufacturing. So Wade, his ideas, like his concepts, you know, they, they allow businesses to, and this, this is a common, you know, a common theme with manufacturing live. We're talking about the manufacturing businesses, the companies, um, in a lot of regards, not just, not just software, right? Uh, he, he, his, his ideas, the concept, they, they allow businesses to spend less time on monotonous design iterations and, and more time on the stuff that really matters, right? The, the innovation. So always love tuning in to Manufacturing Live. So you can check that out April 19th. Um, again, looking forward to it. So I wanted to thank Kirby. Kirby, thank you so much yes. for, for jumping on and, and showing us how to take a soundboard and <laughs> and uh, making us really jealous. <laughs> I think we have to get a live design soundboard now. I think it's, I think it's official. Um, and just like I, I sort of gave you the idea to make a podcast, I think you're giving us the idea to have a soundboard on our, I mean, on our, yeah, on our you, stream. You can get sound bots from all the different champions from around the world. Like I've got Mike, um, Michael Lord. Cool. You know, mate, that's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife. Yeah, get, get people sounds on there. That's that's a great idea. That is, that is a super great idea. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to to Sarah uh, for running the live chat here. Thanks to Mike Sandy for producing the episode. There we go, a round of applause, everyone. Plus one in the chat, got a round of applause here. Um, <laughs> and again, you'll you can uh, subscribe to the Solaris channel, hit the notification bell, keep up with all of our live streaming here. And uh, thank you all for for coming. We'll we'll see you soon. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me.